What's going on guys? It's Brad here with American Wilderness. Recently, Josh and I took a trip to our local flea market and we picked up this double bit Holtz Brooks axe head. Today, I'm gonna go ahead and put a new handle on it. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and stick this handle in the vise and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start taking this lacquer off. You're not gonna wanna be using a spoke shave or a draw knife. That's just gonna take off way too much wood. Uh, what I use, cause I have it on hand, is just the spine of my knife. As you can see, you can get some good curls starting to come off right there. That'll work fine. Uh, cabinet scraper is also great. And uh, I like to touch it up with a little bit of sandpaper before I go ahead and uh, oil this. All right, so as you can see, the cheeks on this ax handle are a little bit wider than the eye on this ax head. I can't get it on right now. So what I'm gonna have to do is make my marks and slowly start shaving off a little bit of wood until this fits. Uh, I'm not going to be using a spoke shave or a draw knife or a knife. Uh, I'm just going to be using a mill bastard file. Slowly taking off a little bit and checking. Take off a little bit, check. It's uh, really easy to take too much wood off, so you really need to uh, be going at a really slow and steady pace. Uh, this isn't going to be fast work by any means. Alright, so when you're seating a double bit handle, uh, if you don't have any prominent markings on either side of the axe head or the handle, it's easy to get this mixed up. You know, you knock it on this way and make your marks. And then when you go to check it again, it might be flipped over the other way and you won't know. So uh, what I like to do is just put a little bit of an X on both. You just line them up. It'll keep you straight. This is how you get a perfect fit. A draw knife or a spoke shave. You know, that stuff can't do this. Little by little is really how you get the tightest axe head. All right, this thing is starting to hit the halfway mark here on the cheeks, so. Getting closer. See, each time we throw that head on, we get all these reference marks of where we need to file next. All right, like I said before, um, you're not gonna be wanting to use a spoke shave for this or a draw knife. You're just gonna take off, you're just gonna take off way too much wood. Um, best thing to be using is just a mill bastard file. Uh, this is a Kearney and Foot uh, made in USA. Uh, I've also got a Heller and a couple of Nicholson's. Uh, Nicholson's are probably gonna be the more popular files that you're gonna find. Uh, my advice is to uh, just hit up your local flea market. 
try to find some of these older brands. These are gonna be a lot better than what's in the big box stores right now. You can also get these handles for them and uh, I don't know, they're like probably two bucks and uh, really nice, a little bit more comfortable. Smacking the back of the handle is a good way to get the ax head to ride up because you're essentially just forcing it through. This doesn't need to be on the ground. It shouldn't be on the ground. It'll just kind of ride up on its own. Getting pretty close there. All right, so I'm just about I'm just about done shaping this handle. Uh, just have to take a little bit more off. Probably only gonna have to set this head a couple more times until it's in its final uh, position. So what I'm gonna do now before it's all the way down there and too hard to get off is I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the shoulder a little bit because it's gonna be hard to get into this area once the head is on. All right, my guess is that this is gonna be the last time I'm gonna have to set the head onto the handle. So we'll give it some good wax and uh, we'll see if we're getting lucky on this one. Getting pretty close, I'm just gonna hit it a few more times, see if I can get it all the way down onto that shoulder. It's getting really close right there. I'm gonna see if I can move it just a little bit more. That's looking really nice right there. I'm starting to get a lot of curls coming up underneath the handle. All right, so this is, um, seems like it's moved just as much as it's going to, but just to be sure, I'm gonna go ahead and make a mark right here on the handle. I'll hit it a few more times and see if it's moved anymore. All right, yeah, it doesn't look like it's moved anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and call that uh, a, a final set. Looks like it's as far down on the handle as it's gonna go. So now it's time for the wedge. All right, so uh, when you're setting the wedge, uh, Unless you have a really good jig for this, uh, sometimes the best thing to use is just an open vise. And uh, you're going to be putting some pressure down onto the, uh, the whole axe itself, so you don't want to be chipping anything. So I like to just put some spacers underneath if necessary. I know I need them on this side. I can just hit it at an angle. That should be good right there. So here's our wood wedge. We're also going to be using a step wedge, a steel wedge. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right. I try to avoid these camera angles because you get to see my mess, but uh, it's necessary for this shot. Uh, you're gonna go ahead and get some boiled linseed oil. Uh, there can be a million other options for this, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say linseed oil. And you are going to soak your wedge. So if you have a tray or something to do this in, that'd be great. I'm just gonna do this over an old rag. All right, so you're gonna take your wedge and you are just going to soak this thing with linseed oil. All right, so this uh, oil, linseed oil is gonna make your wedge and your handle expand. Uh, that's gonna give you a bit of a tighter fit. So you're gonna go ahead and pour some into here too. Don't worry about making a mess here. I think it's impossible not to. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and drive this wedge down into the eye uh, in between the cheeks of the handle. Uh, as you can see, the wedge is a little bit longer than the eye of this ax. That's totally fine. If you want, you can go ahead and taper the bottoms a little bit, but that'll mainly just shave off, you know, whatever doesn't fit in here. So uh, a safe way to do this, uh, you don't wanna be hitting your wedge directly, uh, especially with a steel hammer. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get it started with the wood hammer. I guess that's inevitable. Why 
do I have so many rats? Um. All right, so we got a good start on this wedge. Now, uh, next step is this is kind of a big piece. Uh, I guess I could cut it, but I'm just being lazy. I'm going to go ahead and put this directly on top of the wedge, and then I'm going to drive onto the top of the wood, and I'm just going uh, with the grain here. That way uh, it'll absorb the shock a little bit better. So we'll stick this up on the wedge. We're gonna just drive that down as far as it can go. I'm sure I can go a little bit further, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you where I'm at right now. And you really wanna make sure this is nice and soaked with the oil. Some people will say use water, don't use water. And you can do a similar thing at this point. Once you're not moving as much, uh, just like on, on setting the head, you can go ahead and make a mark with your pencil. Then uh, you can kind of monitor that. Go ahead and hit the top a little bit more, see if it's actually moved. All right, um, that's as far as I'm gonna get this wedge in. You can see the sides of the cheeks are really starting to flare out. This thing is really tight. So our next step is to go ahead and cut this flush. Then we're gonna go ahead and drive our uh, step wedge. All right, so I got this uh, head on the handle. Uh, the rest of the handle is all cut off. We're gonna go ahead and put the step wedge in. Uh, if you can see, I don't know if the camera's picking up, but you can see the steps in there. That's uh, what a step wedge is. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in. I'm gonna kind of go a little bit of an angle. Sometimes when you put it in, the wood will split. That's no big deal, as long as it's still all in there. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and put it in right now. This one's a little bit rusty. Uh, I take them out of just about every old ax head I find. It's nice to just have them on hand. All right, sometimes it's easier to start if you've uh, got some pliers you can hold this with. Just gonna put this in at a bit of an angle, right in the middle. That's all right, and if you want to uh, make it a little bit uh, tighter, here you can go ahead and get a punch, get it onto that wedge, and you can kind of bury what's left of it. Sometimes it's hard to get the ham or the hammer in there. That was pretty good. That's a good hang right there. Alright, we're going to go ahead and oil the handle now. Uh, again, just like uh, with the wedge and the, the eye, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, boiled linseed oil. Uh, this is just the clean strip. Just about every uh, big box store is going to probably have that brand. Works fine. I'm going to go ahead and start soaking this thing. This is a really nice protective coat. Uh, I prefer this over lacquer. Uh, it's easy to get blisters with lacquer. I like feeling the natural wood and uh, the roughness of my own hands will kind of uh, kind of smooth this handle out naturally. And I really just soak this, especially the first time I put this on. 
And what I do is, uh, or what I like to do is for the first week, put the stuff on like once a day. You really want that handle to absorb everything it's going to. And then uh, after that, oil it about once a month. And then after that, oil it about once a year. And this is this is great stuff. I use this on a lot of a lot of my tools, a lot of my old chisel handles, uh, knife handles. You really can't go wrong with boiled linseed oil. And to uh, finish this off, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of leave this sitting in the vise loosely. And I'm just uh, I'm gonna make a mess here, but I'm gonna kind of put a bunch of rags around it. And I want this eye, I want this wedge up on top to just soak as much as it possibly can because this is, uh, the more the wood absorbs, the tighter this is going to be. Because this wood is just going to be expanding every time it sucks it up. And what happens uh, when you use water is, uh, this uh, wood will go back to its final shape, or to its original shape, when it dries out. Uh, when you use oil, it won't dry out, it'll just kind of stay like that. It'll keep its expansion. So I've got a big puddle on there, I'm just going to come back a few times today and just keep adding and adding and adding to the top of this. And then uh, we'll go ahead and wipe off all the excess, clean off the head a little bit and that'll be it. All right, uh, I think I'm done for today. I'm gonna definitely be going back and oiling this, uh, like I said, uh, once a week, and then uh, once a month and like once a year. But uh, this is gonna be the end of the video. Thank you guys for sticking around. Uh, one quick tip, or safety precaution, I should say. Uh, boiled linseed oil on rags is known to spontaneously combust. I've never experienced it, but Others have, and it definitely happens. So uh, if you've got a bucket of water laying around, maybe toss this in there. If you've got a burn pit, toss it in there. Don't leave it on the bench. Don't leave it by sawdust or anything that'll combust. Uh, it's not safe. I'm just throwing them on the ground right now. But uh, thank you guys for watching. This is how to hang a double bit handle. A double bit ax on a handle. I'm Brad with American Wilderness. Thanks for watching.